air, courting a legend, spoiler free review. Let's do it right now. Smash that subscribe button. From director Ben Affleck comes Air, a sports drama about Nike's courting of Michael Jordan in 1984. The film stars Matt Damon as Sonny Vaccaro, marking the first time Affleck has directed Damon. The two have collaborated as actors or writers on several films, most notably winning an Oscar for writing Goodwill Hunting. Air features a loaded supporting cast of Viola Davis, Chris Tucker, Jason Bateman, Chris Messina, and Marlon Wayans. The movie runs one hour and 52 minutes off the top i'll say we're affleck guys oh, he yeah. got plastic surgery to look like matt damon <laughs> there are going to be some biases here this movie i think is a very very well performed witty great sports dramedy that has grown on me since i've seen it despite it being a very safe movie. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, very safe, very uh, inoffensive is is a good way to put it. It's it's very enjoyable and it's very accessible. Like you don't have to be a sports fan to enjoy this movie. And I really think that my big takeaway from from this one was it's a cool genre of movie. Like in my own head, where like when I first hear that it's going to happen, I'm like, I don't know if this movie needs to happen. I don't know if this story needs to be told. And then the movie very emphatically proves you wrong because I think that this story is certainly worth telling and I think they do a very good job of telling it. Ford versus Ferrari walked safely so Air could run safely. It's the, They're both sports movies where you don't need to be super into the sport you know what if you know what ford is you know what the stakes would be of like hey we're making the mustang or whatever and trying to go up against for like you know all the the key things if you're not a big basketball fan you know who michael jordan is if you're not a sneakerhead you know what air jordans are and mm -hmm. you've seen them all over the place and if you are really into those things as is also the case with ford versus ferrari if you're super into basketball and the nba draft and sneakers and all that stuff they get plenty nerdy yeah for you. right yeah like they, they're true enough to the fans that the fans will enjoy it and i wouldn't even call it fan service some of it is does feel like a little bit of fan service and nostalgia service in a way like it's very nostalgia heavy but it's smart enough and knowledgeable enough that it's not a turn off for those people it has the exact tone of a ben affleck directed dramedy starring Matt Damon like it's quirky and, and like yeah. J Jason Bateman also plays a big part I would say it's, I would say it's more of a, a Damon Bateman movie than it is a Damon Affleck movie it's very sharp very well done script from Alex Convery it's what I would think these people would do every funny beat of it I'm like that's Matt Damon and Ben Affleck shout out to them for having so many funny scenes and big scenes take place on the phone, yeah. which I would think it's a lot easier to get people in the same room and get them to react off each other. Maybe it's the quality of actors, but Chris Messina has some great scenes on the phone. Matt Damon has some great scenes on the phone. Everybody in this movie was awesome. Most notably though, award season starts this year with Viola Davis in this movie, I think. I agree. Yeah. And then like her biggest her biggest scene was on the phone mm -hmm. and it was like very, very important to the movie. And if that didn't work, uh it it wouldn't have held the same like, okay, this is a story that deserves to be told, uh, feel to it. She she nails it. She's so good. I know that like the you know, they asked Michael Jordan like, who do you want to play your mom? And they said uh, he said Viola Davis, and uh, the joke that they made was that's like asking like, hey, get Michael ba Michael Jordan for my pickup basketball team. Which I, I I know they're trying to sell a movie, but as movie fans and following Viola Davis in recent years, one Best Supporting Actress in 2016, it's cool to hear Ben Affleck be like the best the biggest achievement in this movie <laughs> yes. was i got viola davis it's, to it, let me tell her what to do it's so funny that like ben affleck and matt damon who are like a-list stars in their own right were like starstruck that they got viola davis to do their movie i think that like it becoming cool to like dog ben affleck i think that that's never going to really leave him in a good and productive way like i think he just really prioritizes like let's do the best shit we can do because 
maybe even if it's really good, they're going to be mean to us about it. So yeah. let's just do the best thing that we can. And Viola Davis is part of that. As I said, Chris Messina is great He's in really this. Good, yeah. uh, Chris Tucker uh, grew on me over the course of the movie. He plays uh, his, his role very, very big. Part of it also just might be we don't see Chris Tucker that often. The guy only acts in a movie like once every like whenever he wants really he'll yeah go, like, he'll go, like every 10 years if he wants yeah his character was a bit heavy-handed especially towards the end but like it's it works because i feel like a lot of things in this movie are um i don't know if i would say like exaggerated but they do like they seem big mm -hmm. and uh, like especially the portrayal of phil knight by ben affleck that was one of my bigger takeaways is that like did Phil Knight sign off on this? Because, like, they kind of turn him into a cartoon character in this movie. And he's very goofy. But, like, he doesn't come off as a bad guy. He just comes off as, like, a very eccentric guy. And they make a lot of jokes at his expense. And, like, a movie that is centered around Nike, it does not come off as, like, an infomercial. It does not come off as propaganda for Nike. It comes off as, like, hey, there were real people involved in this huge thing for a gigantic corporation. More my issue was merely that Ben Affleck played Phil Knight and the physical portrayal of him. It is impossible, and Ben Affleck's great in this movie, but... Phil knowing Knight's just a little guy. Knowing what Phil Knight looks like <laughs> and knowing that Ben Affleck by his own doing, is very broad-shouldered. I Just like some of the shots of him, I was like, man, he would just kick Sonny's ass right now, I guess, <laughs> if they really looked like this. On them making fun of Phil Knight and making fun of Nike, I think it's so important they did that because while they get off a lot of jokes and it's easy to laugh at Phil Knight and Nike in this movie, that's also probably just depicting a fledgling corporation. And... Right. We were born, I was born in the late 80s. You were born in the 90s, I believe. We both grew up in the 90s. We have not experienced a time in which Nike wasn't cool. And I think that it's so important. This movie doesn't work if they don't establish that like Nike isn't cool. They even have the Sunny character ask, like, man, why aren't we cool? Like, they really have to drive home that these people are failing. They're a laughing stock. Nobody really believes in them. They they really dedicate like the first act of the movie establishing the context of, of what's happening and they do it really well, which is to say like Nike is a su successful corporation that has an impact on sports, but it does not have the imprint that you know on basketball. So like, I think they did a really good job of, of really establishing that early on. One of the questions, I guess two of the questions that I, I wanted to ask in terms of detractors or cons or like concerns that people have had with this movie, did the lack of Michael Jordan, like the lack of a, a character playing him, because there is, you know, Michael Jordan's presence in this movie, and there is an actor that plays him, but no lines, right? like one line, but like never any screen time, really. Uh, did that impact you? Did it take you away from the movie at all? And number two, did like the lack of the stakes, uh, impact you or take you away from the movie the michael jordan thing was distracting only in points when everybody would get together yeah and everybody would go straight to dolores jordan who if you read or hear any recollection of the story is how it went like this was about like you're you're courting her and she's calling all the shots and I'm, this makes me want to run back to another Viola Davis moment in a, a second. So, like, there is some plausible deniability there where it's like, no, like, when they all got out of the limo, people did rush over to her, and then, like, the kid just happens to be there. So th th those were the only points in which I was distracted by it and maybe asked myself a uh, question or two. There's a t there's a point in the movie where they also like with a wink and a nudge acknowledge that there isn't a Michael Jordan yeah. character where they ask him a question and he just and doesn't, he doesn't answer. answer. So I, you could it's say that's kind awkward. of like a cop out, but I thought it was kind of funny that they put that in there. And your other question was, did like the lack of stakes, cause you know how it works yes. out. Did, was that, uh, cause I, they specifically address it at one point, And when they did, I was like, I'm very glad they did that because I, had not considered that because as you're watching it you know how it ends they get michael jordan they make a bajillion dollars he's like a gigantic star right yeah. we all know how it goes but there was a good scene in which jason bateman who 
is Michael Bluth in this movie, as he is in pretty much everything, but we love him, sits down with Sonny and explains to him like, hey, here's how this all affects me. Because a lot, this is a classic, you can't do this. Everyone will think you're crazy. Ah, oh, corporate will never, the boss will never go for it. It's one of those movies. When you know that it ends with everybody winning, it's good to be reminded that there are were some 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 heads in the guillotine yeah in like the scene that you're talking about with bateman and, and like where he like sits down with sonny and he's like listen i'm i'm on your i'm in your corner here but here's what happens if this doesn't work out and it's going to fuck me over and like that was very very important to the movie and very very important to jason bateman's character because like you need to be reminded that they're like they don't know that this is going to work out and they are taking a chance and like with the viewer experience you've got the the hindsight or, or like the benefit of knowing that everything's gonna go just fine guys um but like i do think that it was the biggest detractor for me in terms of the movie is just that like they spend so much time like you know oh, this isn't gonna work blah blah, blah. and it's like yeah, you know that it is, and like even when it does, there isn't like much of a grand payoff, and that was like the that was the one thing that I kind of I don't know how you fix it. Right, I, I don't know say, how you fix it, but like it was the one thing that just kind of felt a little off to me in this movie. And it does feel like a board. It, it, we both in different ways said inoffensive, safe, whatever. After we saw the movie, and when I talk to people who have seen it, everyone kind of agrees with that. But I would reckon Ben Affleck and Matt Damon would be like, yeah, but like, there's nothing you can do. Like right. you, you simply know how, how it ends. So And again, it, the story is worth telling. Right. It's just more of you, you watch the, the process. Uh, Matt Maher, who plays Peter Moore, who designed the shoe, yes. was awesome. He, he was always great. pops up in Affleck and Damon things. And he, if the show didn't securely belong to viola davis i would do some like stole the show talk with him everybody in it was really really good i want to bring up the 80s vibe and the 80s aesthetic because there's a it's a major pro for me and it's also a bit of a con i think that aesthetically this does 80s better than maybe anything I've seen do the 80s. Every character and the whole thing just felt so 80s in how it looked. Now, the music okay. was relentless. They did not <laughs> let up with playing an 80s rock song every two seconds in this movie. And that to me is honestly the biggest attraction. And I love all the songs, but every time somebody wasn't speaking in this movie, I felt like they were just, you motor and I'm like, okay, right, got it. <laughs> they also like explicitly address like uh, born in the USA, and there's a whole scene and like uh, mm -hmm. speech about it, and it ends up being a a, pl a plot point in the movie. So pretty heavy handed with that. You're right. A little book reporty that was. I will say a little distracting, and like this is maybe a credit to the costume design. I was waiting for the scene of Phil Knight in the tracksuit the entire movie, mm. and it doesn't come until the very end of the movie. Yeah, and I was spent like I was in my head being like, "When are they doing the suit? Like, when are the, when am I seeing him in this iconic look?" And it just it was it was I was so drawn to it, and I was so um, uh, like I was so impatient with it that it was taking me out of the movie because I wanted to see it. What if they made it a post credit scene? <laughs> that would have been mad. That would have been so mad. That would have been awesome. Give you a good movie and then hit you with that uh, awesome post credit scene. Uh, let's get into positives and negatives of the film. I would say positives, excellent cast. An extremely easy watch. This will be very rewatchable. It's a sports movie that sports fans will love nerdy not nerdy you're gonna be into it well i mean i would say like the big pro there is like it's a sports movie for, for everybody, everybody. Yeah. nailed it uh in terms of cons uh does feel like a lack of stakes and payoff and there's a lot of ben affleck's feet oh yeah 
Well, this was famously directed by Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I, I agree in putting like the, the safeness in the uh, the negative section. The lack of Michael Jordan, I would say, is distracting for yeah. brief instances. Although I want to almost put it in like smushed font because when you see lack of Michael Jordan distracting, you'll be like, so you're thinking the whole time where's Michael Jordan? You're really no, not. No, it's just a little awkward at points. Yeah, and uh, I put the the music dominates. That, I would put that as a negative. Letterboxd, where are you going? I am in the... I'm at four right now. I, I reserve the right to maybe be a three and a half. So I'm four, reserving the right to go up to four and a half. I, okay. think, this, I think the next time I watch it, I'm going to like it a lot more. That is air, friends.